It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Since I've uh, finally gotten done with the very long, not really in terms of gameplay, though it did go on a bit longer than I wanted it to, a uh, game of Star Masters. Um, the game, just playing the game took a long time because of singing and because of just uh, the, the busyness of personal life. I finally got it done, so it's... it's took, I think, the whole summer. It was a good game for the summer. It didn't work so well in the autumn. Um, finally getting back to a time when I can think about the tournament as a whole. So since I love to film processes, processes, I thought I would do that on camera and we could just kind of uh, see, pull back for a moment, see where things are, are looking in terms of the tournament progression, and then maybe think a bit about where things are going next because we never really know where things are going next. So, let's start with the Omega bracket, because it's a lot more um, positive, I guess, as to where it is. We have four champions already, or four semi-finalists, I guess. This is, no, four finalists? No, semi-finalists, yeah, this is the semi-finalists. I kind of think of the time agent in here I stand as being the, the final, but really, whatever this is, is the final. Um, so, we have four people, Fat Matt, TD, Sweet Pea, and Sparky, who are there. Now, Pinky is on top here, but that doesn't mean she's necessarily going to be here in the Baralti leg. Um, it's still down to four. We, let, we ended off the Baralti leg with Annie and Abyss, if I recall. And I don't think I had set in mind exactly what was going to happen. I mean, the, the, originally this bracket was, or this leg was um, set up so that, you know, people would drop off one by one until it ended up with a two on two leg, uh, a two on two game. I think, I don't know, I just don't. For some reason, I, I, I stopped loving that at, at Andy and Abyss. I liked how it worked with Empire and Shogun, but once we got to Andy and Abyss, which is not Warrior Knights, um, I kind of changed my mind. So what I think I want to do instead, especially since I've, I've really been enjoying the coin games, um, and we ended up on Andy and Abyss, I think I might go through each of those coin games and then have the top two scorers um, be the ones who do the one-on-one -on -one final fight for Baralti Lake. I do have a, the, that game in mind, so I'm not going to have the coin games to s determine that. Um, so next will probably, I might do a Distant Plane next instead of Cuba Libre, which would be kind of the more natural progression. The reason I would do a Distant Plane next is because I've been playing Cuba Libre a lot in person. Um, and I think probably after that, the next game I would play in person is Andy and Abyss and then kind of work up to a distant plane. I really want to have two um, competent government players before I start playing a distant plane with people because I think that's that's kind of the crux of the game is, is that relationship. Just from reading it, I haven't even played it yet. So I think a distant plane will be next in this leg. I just decided that today, though, so I could change my mind. Um, hopefully I was clear as to what the placement order was at the end of Annie and Abyss so I can figure out who scored what. I know I kind of messed up the end of that game, but I'm going to just let however it ended stand. Pretty sure Pinky won it though. Um, I'm not sure who got second place. I think TD lost and then it was like in here, I don't know. So um, maybe do some scoring system so that the, you know, the winner would get four points. Yeah, I, I don't know why you'd give the loser one point. Why not just give them zero points? So you do three, two, one, zero. All right, so that's the Omega leg. I think that's where we're going there. Um, Roadrunner here finally won this thing. It could have, I mean, geez, it was close. I didn't really wrap up my thoughts on Star Masters. It was a, a mess. A lot happened there, and it got so that it was very difficult to even transmit information to you because it, it would, I would have to just start talking because <laughs> it was... It's hard to keep up the uh, emotionality uh, that's required for singing. You're like, oh, we're going to fight again. You know, it's just kind of uh, games are, are a different sort of narrative than musical theater. There's, there's um, lots of big moments, and if you have those in succession... Uh, musically, it doesn't really work. Uh, anyway, so she won, um, thankfully, because I didn't know what I was going to do for the next game. Not in terms of the game so much, but in terms of um, wh what sort of music I would do. It seems like I would had had to c actually compose music in order to kind of continue the progression. Um, so I think that might have actually caused me to uh, fudge things in Roadrunner's favor. Maybe not consciously, but... Um, you know, at, towards the end of Star Masters, I did a lot of fudging because I kind of forgot the rules and it was kind of like, uh, maybe that's, and the rules were changing too. I don't know. Uh, but still, it was a good game. And I think um, 
Bix Beetleman had a fair shot at it. All right, so then we go down to this one. This leg hasn't even started yet. We haven't done anything with this leg. Not a lot of plans for it. Um, is that the one that's going to be Tattlebots will know your secrets? Yeah. I think this is going to be Tattlebots will know your secrets. I, I was also thinking about bringing in Creekbot um, into that too. I, I don't know exactly what I, I want to do with this leg. Um, I was going to maybe mix in these people with it, but I kind of like where I'm going with these guys. I really enjoy the coin game, so I think I might just keep that separate and not do any sort of crossover game that affects both of them. I could do a crossover though with these two. Brezza and Hubba of the Battlestar Galactica leg. Um, another interesting thing to do would be um, maybe Ici C'est la France or some game that involves uh, some counterinsurgency just because there's the duplicity um, of the whole Battlestar Galactica thing. And it's the French player. So actually, I think I'm kind of deciding this out loud. I didn't even think EC C'est la France. I think I was thinking of a different game. I was thinking of Cybernauts, but that, that would be tough to play solitaire. Um, so maybe you see Sela France will finish that. That might be pretty cool. And then here we have another two on two. So maybe these two can mix in with this, but I don't know. Um, we have Pegasus and Runt who, um, finished that really long game of seven by seven ages. I really got to get a short game in next because I've just been doing long, long games. And then we have another, um, semi-finalist here with fries. So yeah. Hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do next. I think I'm going to take some time and maybe clean up this room now that I'm going to have the table free, you know, set things on as I move things around and kind of upgrade it. And then, um, not too much, and then start something. We'll see, maybe a distant plane since that's kind of my, my yen right now. I've been getting into that counterinsurgency coin series from GMT. Um, I don't know what I was going to do with these two. Maybe these two will mix in with this somehow. That might be the way to go. I'll have to do some thinking. So that's where the tournament stands. I think uh, we're probably three years into this. That was my guesstimate as to when the tournament would be done, but we're not even, we're getting close. I guess we're getting close. We're getting close to doing the, the preliminary rounds, um, but that's all right. I'm enjoying it, I'm enjoying it. Not, not a perfect structure. Uh, I've been thinking about some other ways I could structure, maybe if there's going to be a tournament to come, how I would structure that differently. Um, Maybe something a little more freeform, but we'll see. Uh, next time on the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, no game.